Welcome everyone to this webinar for Antilles Gold ASX code AAU. Shortly, I'll introduce Exploration Director, Dr. Christian Granger, who will talk to the potential of the copper prospects in Cuba that are part of Antilles Gold's exploration agreement with the government, government's mining company, Geo Minera. These include El, P El Pila Copper Porphyry System and three concessions within the Sierra Maestra Copper Belt. Following the presentation, attendees will have the opportunity to ask questions directly to Christian during a live Q&A session. So as the presentation is occurring, think about what questions you would like asked and submit them in the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. And I will put them to Christian during the next session. Okay, so let's get started. I would now like to introduce Antilles Gold Exploration Director, Dr. Christian Granger. The full presentation that you are about to see is on the ASX. So today, Christian will purely be focusing on the exploration activities of the company. So we will skip through a few slides, but rest assured they are all on the ASX. Christian, over to you. Thanks, David. So as David said, we'll be discussing very briefly the why we think our new projects that we have in uh, Antilles Gold, uh, copper focus projects in Cuba, are very prospective and why we're getting very excited about them. Currently drilling El Pilar, but we're also working on some new prospects that are in the uh, Sarah Maestra belt in south southeast Cuba. Let's go to the next slide. Okay, that's just the forward-looking disclaimer, so it has to go up. Um, just a quick intro. Um, I'm an Australian geo. I've been in South America for about 20 years. Um, I've been focusing really on South America, Central America and the Caribbean. Um, I was educated at UWA in Western Australia. I did a PhD with Bali in Brazil. And the last 20 something years, uh, focusing on really on mineral exploration, uh, focusing on basin uh, precious metals. Um, I've been lucky to be involved in a number of uh, fairly significant discoveries over the years, including Britica in Colombia, which is plus 10 million ounces, Alacran, which is a large copper gold discovery, which will be probably Colombia's first large open pit copper gold deposit, and also something more recently, the Apollo discovery, also in Colombia with collective mining. So um, I think the key is, is that being involved in uh, exploration discovery, it's definitely a team business. It's something that has to happen with patience and time. Um, but once you've been through the process, I think it's something that you learn to understand what the, the dynamics of it are and, and, and where to accelerate and where to focus on uh, things that are uh, certainly prospective. So that, that brings us to Cuba and, and why are we there? Cuba is um, a very, very mineral rich country. Um, it's vastly underexplored and it has some very large mineral deposits in there, which most people don't understand about. So it's, it's, it's very ripe for exploration. Um, it's an area that hasn't undergone exploration for many decades um, and it's got a large land mass. So it's something that's very, very prospective and it's the reason that we're certainly focusing on copper projects in, 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 Q, in Cuba. Let's move to the next slide. Okay, so originally Antilles Gold had a gold focus and, and that's where they've been working on the Damahagua project. Um, but we're also now looking at the Nueva Sabana Oxide Gold project, which is part of a copper gold project, but it's the oxide zone. And, but that's part of our copper focus. Is, and basically the projects that have come into Antilles Gold recently are El, El Pilar, which is a copper gold porphyry system and the oxide cap on the surface, which we're looking at near term production. And also the exploration potential of the Sierra Maestra belt, which is in the southeast part of Cuba, which we'll talk about in a minute. And that's our uh, La Cristinas and La Vega project prospects. Next project, next slide. Um, this is just the company structure. I think we can step through this um, quickly. So we, this is in, in the presentation that's available. So let, let's look at Cuba, why are we there? So as I touched on, it, it's, it's a mineral rich, mineral rich country. It's only moderately explored. It was really explored up until the 60s and 70s. And then there's been a couple of decades where there hasn't been much exploration there at all. Although there is a number of very large uh, mineral deposits that are located within Cuba and a number of geological belts. So it's got everything you need to get into and, and really look for uh, potential there that hasn't been seen in the last couple of decades. And, and particularly it's underdeveloped. So we've got strong gov government support there. You work in conjunction with uh, Gia Minera, which is the, the Cuban government. Um, and we've got all these uh, good relationships that have been pushing us ahead. So the, the, the key with Cuba is that because you're working with the government, you don't have all these problems with uh, permitting, 
um, environmental issues, all that kind of stuff. Everything gets pushed through fairly quickly with the government because they're your partner. So that's something that's quite unique um, these days around the world, but it's something that certainly facilitates being an exploration company in Cuba, certainly with time timeframes anyway. Let's move forward. Okay, so what's the, the near-term strategy with, with Antilles Gold? So um, we've started exploring, we've been drilling at the El Pilar Copper Gold Porphyry System, um, and that incorporates the early stage um, drilling that we've been looking at and re-evaluating the uh, Nueva Sabana um, part of the system, which is the oxide cap on top of the uh, Copper Gold Porphyry System, which is at depth. Um, we're also the, the La Demhagua Dem mine. So basically the idea with uh, Nueva Sabana is that it's oxide, it's, it's, uh, it's low capex. It's been pretty much drilled out previously in the 90s by a Canadian junior who basically left the project. We identified it because it's certainly something that's part of a much larger system. However, the oxide gold and copper part of the system is something that gives us a very cheap entry point into early production, which can finance exploration going forward. So it, it's an easy entry part, uh, uh, project. It's something that was overlooked and lost in time. And it's certainly something that if you see it anywhere in the world, you would certainly jump at it because although the oxide part of the system is quite small, the overall potential for the uh, copper gold porphyry system at depth is, is quite large and very it's very prospective. Let's move to the next slide. Okay, let's start with El Pilar. So El Pilar is located in central Cuba. Um, you can see from the map there, we're in an area with excellent infrastructure. It lies on a main road, which runs east-west through Cuba. Um, it's less than two kilometers off the main road. It's near a main railway line, which again runs east-west through Cuba, um, and it's on flat uh, terrain. So access is fantastic. We've got water, high energy power right ne nearby. But the idea is that the access is fantastic, but it's it's flat, so you don't get a lot of outcrop in this area. But what we did see earlier on in this area is that there's a very, very large alteration footprint here. It's probably about two square kilometres in size, and it's associated with a number of surface exposures of oxide, copper and gold mineralisation and some artisanal mining. So we've got about a 750 uh, hectare exploration licence, and, but we've got about 17,000 hectares of reconnaissance permits around that because this is just one part of a much larger system. This is part of a, a belt that runs uh, northwest, southeast through central part of Cuba. And there will be multiple uh, porphyry centers on here or other styles of mineralization, but we're focusing firstly on LPLR. So why LPLR? I mean, we came here, we saw there's a very large exploration, uh, hydrothermal alteration footprint here. This was explored in the 90s by a Canadian junior that did a lot of very shallow drilling. It basically was just in the oxide. And what they found, there was a, a gold-rich uh, uh, gold oxide cap, of which below that you've got leached down copper, um, which goes down to the fresh rock interface. So when we saw the alteration in this area, we, we knew straight away that this is potentially a pretty large copper gold porphyry system. So we basically collated all the old data, looked at it, and we saw that most of the drilling was very shallow. Only some of the holes went into the lower sulphide. There was some copper sulphide in there. So it became pretty obvious to us that this was more of a large scale um, copper gold porphyry play um, rather than just an oxide cap. But there will be a lot more oxide mineralization here. And we've certainly seen that with the early drilling that we've done today. So what are we doing? We've drilled um, and uh, basically confirmed the old Canadian database through here for the uh, uh, gold oxide cap. Um, we're looking below that at the interface where we're seeing a lot of leached copper. So the uh, copper potential here, I think, in the oxide will, will grow, although the gold part is pretty well defined in this area. But the LPLR is only part of uh, uh, one prospect within a two square kilometre area where we have LPLR, we have Gaspar, and we also have Camillo. So we've only really tested um, to date LPLR. Um, we're seeing copper gold porphyry mineralisation below the oxide cap. Um, we've just started drilling at Gaspar as well, and we're seeing really encouraging results there today. So given what we're seeing at surface, we know porphyry systems are pretty large. They're generally sub-vertical, so we know it should go down significantly up to about 1,000 metres. So we're just in the upper parts of the porphyry system. What we're interpreting from the alteration we're seeing at surface, um, we've got the gold cap, oxide cap, we've got the copper uh, oxide below that, and then below that we have the potential for the uh, sulphide copper gold, which is the really big tonnage potential that's here. Okay, let's go to the next slide.
Okay, this is just some of the photos that we took on our first visit. So just walking around here, first of all, you can see that the, all the rock is white. It's completely bleached. So, and you've got these uh, iron oxide uh, veining, uh, which is running through it. So basically what it, this is showing is that we're in an extremely altered part, part of a system here, a porphyry system. You've got different styles of breaches and veining, which are related to porphyry systems, which we'll touch on later. But the footprint here is very large. I mean, these photos were taking over two square kilometres of area that cover El Pilar, Gaspar, and also Camillo. Um, and you can see the rocks are completely blitzed. So this is what you would see on an oxidised, exposed upper part of a porphyry system. And that's where why we're so excited about the potential here for copper gold. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, this, so what we did, we did some early uh, geophysics at surface. We did a large ground magnetics and IP uh, program. And what it's showing is, is that basically, if you look on the right-hand side there, we've got a large magnetic uh, response, which is from the original unaltered rock. And then we've got this zone where the magnetics is basically washed out. And that's basically related to the uh, late porphyry alteration system that we're seeing there. And that extends from LPLR through to Gaspar, and then over to Camilla, we're starting to see the, mag the original magnetics uh, still in place. So what we're seeing is a big, big footprint of alteration here. Um, it's probably about two kilometres east-west and about a kilometre and a half north-south. So a porphyry system isn't just one intrusion. You generally get a series of intrusions that come through. Sometimes some of them are mineralised, some sometimes it's only one. But basically what you'll get is a large footprint of alteration, what we're seeing and we'll get different centers that have mineralization at surface. So you'll always test those surface, those zones that are mineralized at surface, but it doesn't mean that the main part of the porphyry system is gonna be right underneath that. So you have to be quite systematic and go through and test all of these zones. And, that, and that's what we're doing starting at LPLR and now moving to Gaspar. So uh, we've got the big footprint, we've got the big size that shows us that we have potentially a large tonnage system here. We just need to go through the exploration process and test the targets and, and, and work out where the main copper gold sulfide system is. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so th this is just some of the photos that we got in the early uh, drilling where we were originally went in, we tested some of the um, sulfide zones that were mineralized from the old uh, Canadian drilling. And, and this is just some of the photos here. So what we're seeing is some really, really nice mineralized copper, gold, uh, porphyry style mineralization. So if we look at some of the drilling we got through there, hole 4A that we drilled was 134 meters at 1.23% copper from 49 meters. And the gold mineralization is above that in the oxide zone. So you go gold oxide, copper oxide, and then copper gold sulfide below that. So these are some of the images here. The um, You can see we've got breaches and veining through here. These photos are mainly the breaches, but what we're seeing is we've got a very, very clean porphyry system here. Um, it's mainly uh, primary chalcopyrite um, with a little bit of bornite, and then it's oxidized into secondary uh, chalcosite, which we're seeing the dark colored stuff there with some free native copper. Um, but what it's showing is, is that copper potential, potential here is very, very good. And this is what we're looking for. We're looking for a big copper system that might have some gold credits in it. Um, and we'll take advantage of the oxide cap at the surface for short term production and, and cash flow. Okay, let's move to the next slide. Okay, this is from some of the early drilling that we did through the gold oxide zones. We'll look at first, we'll look at the gold oxide zone and then we'll look at the copper oxide zone and then we'll look at the sulfide potential. So this is some of the great grades that we've got from some of the uh, early gold drilling. So in the upper part of the system, what you're seeing here, everything's oxidized. You're not seeing any sulfide. What you're seeing is remnant um, uh, sulfides that have been organized uh, oxidized to iron oxides. But what you can see in the images on the right-hand side here, you can see some remnant veining in these banded veins that you see in there, they're called porphyry B veins. So as soon as we saw these, we knew that this was definitely a porphyry system. Um, so from walking around its surface, seeing the alteration, identifying that as a potential porphyry system, and then drilling into it, seeing porphyry style mineralization, that was a, ma that was a major uh, advance for us to understand this system and then to get really serious about testing it and finding out where the main part of the, the copper gold system is. So we're looking at the gold cap here. So everything's oxidized. Um, the gold remains in the upper part of the uh, system. The copper is leached down. So um, we've got some great gold hits here. So this is hole uh, two that we drilled. 
and it was basically 53 and a half meters at nearly 11 grams gold for 12 meters including 18.4 at 14 so we've got some fantastic gold grades in the oxide and we'll certainly take advantage of them in the early uh, mining stages um, let's go to the next slide we'll look at what the secondary copper looks like Okay, so this is uh, from hole uh, 4A that we just discussed, which had the great hit copper hit in it. Um, basically, copper's leached down, so it's really only in the lower part of the oxide where you're going to see what the secondary copper looks like. And we've been very fortunate because what we're seeing is just all secondary chalcosite. So second chalcosite is extremely clean. It's probably 88% copper. So it's this dark coloured mineral here, this black stuff. So very, very simple to treat. It's got no arsenic, it's got no nasties in there. So what we're going to find in the upper part of the oxide zone at LPLR is we've got a very, very clean concentrate, which will be fantastic. Um, so below this oxide zone, we transition into what is the uh, in-situ copper gold porphyry sulfide system. And that's what we'll talk about in the next slide. So if we move ahead. Okay, so what, what we've done is we're now testing to see what the copper gold system looks like at depth in the primary uh, sulphide system below the oxide. So as I said, only a few of the early holes by the Canadians actually went through and they only just clipped into the sulphide zone. There was no deep drilling in this deposit. So we've just started a, uh, uh, a deeper drilling program at LPLR. And the idea is to test below the oxide and go into... And, and test the uh, primary sulphide mineralization there. So we drilled three holes. Um, they're not that deep, um, but what we're seeing is that we're seeing a combination of different porphyry intrusives with classic porphyry style alteration, veining, and also breaches. So we're in the right environment. So what we're seeing at El Pilar, El Pilar is part of the system. Um, we're seeing mainly porphyry dikes and little fingers here. So it's proved the concept that yes, we're in a porphyry system, we now need to find the main body because as I said before, porphyry systems don't just occur in one place. They're generally a, a larger intrusion at depth of which you get porphyry fingers coming up and you've got to find the right ones within that cluster of porphyries. And that's what we're doing. So we've been looking very hard at the structure. All of our core is orientated. So we're looking deep at what's going on in the porphyry system. We've got some really good geologists. We've got some good Colombian porphyry guys that are out there that have been involved in porphyry exploration in the Andes for many decades. They've been involved in a number of discoveries as well. So we've got good guys working on the project on the ground. Um, and we're really looking at what's controlling the system. So we've looked at LPLR now. We've hit porphyry mineralization there in the sulfides. It's exciting, but we need to test the other targets to work out exactly where the main mass of porphyry is and where the most potential for the economic zone is. And that's exactly what we're doing now. So let's just move to the next slide. Okay, so that, that, that's LPLR in, 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 in very, very briefly. So what we've done at LPLR, we're now moving to Gaspar, and we'll talk about that uh, a little bit later on in question time, but basically Gaspar is another porphyry center, which is part of the LPLR uh, system. And, and we're seeing very, very po uh, positive visuals from that. Okay, so let's move on now and let's look at um, what our second uh, prong attack for copper exploration in, in, in Cuba is. If no, if we just go back to the, the previous slide. So we're, we're bas basically focusing on, on an area in southeastern Cuba, which is called the Sierra Maestra Copper Belt. Now, this is an extremely prospective belt, and it's probably the most prospective area, I think, in, in Cuba for copper deposits. Um, the reason we, we think this and know this is because there's a very, very large copper deposits in there in, in, in this belt. It's called El Cobre. So El Cobre was found in the early 1500s. It's been continually mined since then, and it's really the oldest copper mine in the Americas. Um, so we know that this belt has the potential to host large copper deposits. Um, the age of this belt and the intrusions that are the source of the metals in the Sierra Maestri, the Eocene in age, and that's very, very particular for exploration geologists. When you hear that age of Eocene, you think of the Chileno giants, you think of the new big porphyry discoveries that are being found in uh, northwestern Ecuador, um, and you think of places like Choco in, in Colombia. So it's, a, it's an, a geological period that was very, very productive for copper formation, particularly with porphyry systems. So this is one of these belts. It's completely underexplored. Um, as I said, El Cobre is the oldest copper mine in the Americas. You'd think this belt would have been absolutely blitzed with exploration. It hasn't. Um, so we've been taking the advantage to really have a good look at this belt and try and find 
um, new areas. So we've come up with two areas of which the main one is what we call La Castrina and Vega Grande. And we've got a 3,600 uh, hectare geological investigation area, which is a focused area where we've already found our cropping mineralization related to high sulfidation and porphyry systems. And then around it, we've got a, a large, almost 50,000 hectare reconnaissance license. And that's to basically cover this area that we think is the most prospective. It's a long strike to the west from El Cobre, and we're seeing just huge footprints of alteration, mineralization, and there has been some uh, underground mining exploration by the Russians up until the late 60s. So there's mineralization here that's known about, lost in time, so we're taking advantage of moving in here. We, we think we've really got a tiger by the tail in this district here. It's elephant country, completely underexplored, and we'll be focusing on this area next year. If we go to the next slide. This is just a, a zoom in of where we're working in uh, La Cristina. So this is right on the side of a road here. So basically what you're looking at here is we were driving through an area where we had, a, 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 there was, had been some historical underground exploration by the Russians. Um, basically driving across the road here, we're seeing these large footprints of both vegetation kill areas um, huge areas of alteration where you've seen a lot of sulphide being oxidized at surface so that you can see here all the yellow there is secondary sulfur. So th this is part of a high sulfidation system here, we think. We're pretty sure of that. And that's related to a porphyry system. So it's the, it's the higher part of the system. So we've got anomalous gold and copper all through these areas here. We've got a footprint that's probably, wow, so somewhere around eight square kilometers here. So there's multiple centers. So these areas have been explored, but they haven't been drilled. Um, these are walk-up drill targets. So we've got, um, from the geochem and what we're looking at so far is we've got copper gold systems with molybdenum. So that's a pretty good um, signal that we're in the right environment for both large porphyry systems and also high sulfidation systems with both gold and copper. So this is where we'll be doing our focus from next year. It's um, we, we think we've tied up the main part of the, the, the ground that is most prospective um, and again, we're working with the government. So everything's fast track with titling. I mean, we basically found this area and got this moved into the title within two months. And that's unheard of globally. And it's because we're working with the government here. So this is an extremely prospective area. It's elephant country. We're super, super excited about it. And we're dying to get stuck into this area in early 2024 with our exploration plans. Next slide. So, just to summarise, I know it's only quick, but basically if we look at El Pilar, the copper gold porphyry system there, we, we'll divide it into oxide and, and, and primary mineralisation. The oxide, we've got high grade gold and copper located in oxide mineralisation, which allows for a very low capex and a start up to production, which can finance exploration, um, both in throughout the El Pilar belt, but also in the Sierra Maestri. Um, it's very simple metallurgy. Um, we've got very, very clean concentrate here. We've got no arsenic, so that, that's really important. So the primary mineralization, we've just started the deep drilling. We've identified porphyry mineralization under LPLR. We're drilling at uh, Gaspar. Visually, we're seeing similar things there, but albeit on a, I think on a larger scale, so we're pretty excited about that. We've yet to drill uh, Camillo, that'll come in time. Um, and it's, it's still early days. I mean, we've only got a couple of deep holes into this system. So it's something that we need a bit of time and patience, but the early um, visuals are, are very, very encouraging. We're certainly in a copper gold porphyry system here. Okay, so, so to Sierra Maestri, so as I just discussed, this is a prolific and underexplored volcanic arc, um, completely uh, wide open. It's got large scale deposits, mineralized, um, known for hundreds of years through here, underexplored. We think we've tied up the main parts of the belt and we're dying to get stuck in there with the exploration next year. Thanks, Christian. A great presentation, not just on Antilles Gold, but the wider copper market and the immense opportunity that you've uncovered in Cuba. Um, just to remind everyone, if you've got a question, use the Q&A button at the bottom of the screen, as a number of people have been doing already. So a lot of questions coming through. A very well-educated audience, it, it appears. Um, firstly, just step back a bit. The relationship with the government, obviously your partners in terms of the development of these projects, um, how active are they in in sort of the the exploration activities and other things, or or is it is it a partnership where you bring your your exploration expertise um, to them to to assist them understand 
the opportunity and, and how to work together moving forward? Yeah, they're, they're very open-minded. It's It's been excellent working with GM and Aero because basically they lack the skills and the, the technology to basically do modern exploration. So unfortunately, but also fortunately for us, Cuba has been in standstill for some time since the Russians left, basically. So um, they let us go in. We have free reign. We go to look at all of their data. We look through all of their projects. We go out and visit any of the areas we want to, and it, it, it's a very fast-track process. So we've brought in experienced people. We're training up some young Cubans, and I think that's really important because they'll be the ones that'll be carrying on this exploration process. But, I mean, very, very proactive. I mean, some of the easiest and most fast-tracked exploration I've seen anywhere with licensing. Uh, if you look at what's happening in South America right now with populist governments, everything seems to be going backwards. In Cuba, it's very much being fast-tracked. It's going forward. It's, it's a delight to explore in this country. Now, looking at the projects themselves, and I will um, where I need to read the question as it stands because um, there's some technical elements to it. But um, question here, have you conducted any drilling yet on either Gaspar or Camillo, the two intrusives along strike from El Pilar? And if so, what are your observations? Okay, so we, we, we've we we've done a couple of deep holes, well, deeper holes. They're only still a couple hundred metres deep uh, at El Pilar. We've hit porphyry system there you need to go through these prospects systematically because if you put too much drilling into one, you might find the other ones are a lot more prospective. We've put um, two very shallow holes into Gaspar because there was only a few shallow RC holes from the Canadians there. Straight away, we hit porphyry mineralisation and, and, and much larger volumes there. So we're currently drilling a deeper hole there now. And what we're seeing is we're seeing a much more dynamic system there. We're seeing a lot of visual copper. Um, we're seeing a lot of alteration higher temperature alteration. So um, Gaspar is looking really, really prospective. We're really happy. And as I said, first hole, deep hole is still in progress, but visually it's looking really good. We will definitely drill more holes there, but we also need to look at Camillo as well, because from the geophysics, that's showing us that these are the three centres. So from the drilling we've done so far, we've, we're getting 100% success rate. We just need to test everything to make sure you're not putting all your eggs into one basket too early. And that, that's basically all for exploration. Uh, at what point does the copper porphyry start and the oxide finish at El Pilar? Okay, so El Pilar, the oxide is generally about 30 to 50 metres um, in true thickness. So generally the, the oxide uh, gold at the top is somewhere, you know, it starts generally near surface and then goes down to 20 or 30 metres, sometimes a little bit more, and then the copper oxide will kick in. We don't know exactly the, the base of oxidation. It's a little bit uneven in parts of El Pilar, but, uh, but that's good because we know we should be able to find more oxide copper there because it, it's generally leached out and then moves uh, horizontally. So um, we've probably got a good 50 to uh, 80 metres in different places vertically, um, and that's hosting uh, both, uh, well, gold in the upper part, copper in the lower part. So it, it's, it's quite a significant open pit there with the oxide, and then we go into the sulphide below that. I like when a shareholder uses the word we when they ask a question. Um, and the question is, have we found the main body of the porphyry system then? Is it under El Pilar? No, um, we've we've found part of the porphyry system. We've also just discovered part of the porphyry system under Gaspar on the first hole. So again, porphyry systems isn't one intrusion and it's all mineralised. You're going to get early intrusions that are barren. You're going to get the... the uh, ones that are mineralised and, and others that are mineralised but less mineralised. So you have to quickly go through and test all the prospects with a couple of holes and then you find out where is the most prospective area and go for that. So we've hit the porphyry system on every deep hole so far in two of the prospects. We still need to test Camillo, but we've got 100% success rate. Now we need to focus and work out where the main part of the system is and then we can focus on that. Yeah. Now this one's clearly come from a, uh, a geologist um, I note the breccia, the breccia, breccia textures. Sorry, I mispronounced that. Could this be diatreme related? Well, yeah, it potentially could be. But what we're seeing, we're seeing intrusive rocks here. So we're seeing porphyry, diuretic porphyry, different phases of diorites here. So we're seeing the breccias coming up as well. That, that's not uncommon at all in a porphyry system. Generally, you'll get the porphyry, classic porphyry system with your veining system in that coming up first, and then breccias will come up later or in between the different porphyry phases. So what we're seeing is a classic porphyry system. Um, we do need more drilling to work it out, but the, the good thing is we're seeing different styles of mineralisation. We're seeing classic porphyries and porphyry veining, and we're also seeing these breccias, whether they're peripheral, in between, or cutting across it. 
we don't know yet, but um, certainly we'll find that out in time. Uh, any of the three concessions in the Sierra Maestra Copper Belt a standout, and when will exploration start? Well, we've already started. I mean, we basically had been spending time down there looking, just doing general first-pass prospecting, going through all data, trying to work out where all the old workings were, visiting the larger deposits there to have a look and see what they are. Um, I think the Sierra Maestra has been very uh, misconstrued and, and, and interpreted poorly. It's definitely a porphyry belt. All the copper that's known there is, is is related to porphyry systems. We know that now. So we've been working on it. We've um, done our first pass. We've worked out the areas that we need. Um, more intense exploration will be starting early to 2024. And that's when we're basically going to move in full exploration teams there, working on it 24-7 and starting with ground geo, uh, geophysics, also geochem, and then working our way up to drilling. And in terms of the ownership structure of the deposits, how does that work with the with the government? Okay, so up until now, it's been a 50-50 joint venture, but given the issues in Cuba of, of late, what we're seeing is, and that, that's just not with mining, that's across the board, whether you're building a hotel or, or whatever you're doing. So it's generally been a 50-50 split. What we're seeing in Cuba now is that people are renegotiating uh, these joint ventures and making it 75-25. Um, in favour of, of the investors, which would be us. So um, we're seeing a more flexible investment scenario, and it's also a lot better, obviously, for large investment, particularly in large porphyry projects. So we're seeing a flexible government. The government is listening to companies that are investing large amounts of money here and particularly going towards mine development as well. So it, everything is moving in the right direction in Cuba. And is there any catalyst in completing the agreement with Geo Minera? Okay, so it's we're, we're working on it now. Obviously, it's ongoing because of these um, this transformation between the standard 50-50, which has been the last couple of decades, to so the new one. So we, we're in uh, actively engaging with them now. We're discussing the 75-25 or something of that nature, um, whether the oxide would be 50-50 and then the, the sulphide, the larger potential below that is 75-25. But it's something that we're discussing right now. And, and it, it's something that will probably come out in the next couple of months, how, how we're proceeding with that. But certainly um, the, the government is open to discussing new forms of investment for Cuba and new splits. Now, I'll, I'll throw these questions around, so I apologise if they uh, come a little bit from left field. Um, some of these are, are down in the detail. There seems to be three more holes to drill at El Pilar in the porphyry system, when do you anticipate that these holes will be drilled? And of course, shareholders all want to know, when do you think results might come? Okay, so f first of all, exploration programs, you've always got to be flexible because as soon as you get holes into a system, things change. It's just how exploration is. So it's always nice to come up and we're going to drill exactly these amount of holes in this places, but the reality is it's going to change. And when things do change, it's because things are positive because you're finding new things. So We've done three holes into the old Pilar system. We're drilling our first deeper hole into Gaspar now, which looks very, very encouraging. So I would, well, what, what we're suggesting to do now is to drill another one or two deeper holes in Gaspar and then go back to uh, El Pilar. So um, again, and the reason for that is because you have to work out where your best potential is for a discovery or a major discovery, where the major tons, where's the most economic part of the system. El Pilar has the most obvious oxide potential now, but that doesn't mean that the sulphide potential below it is the best either. Um, there is some artisanal mining at Gaspar, um, but not, not as much as El Pilar, but that doesn't matter. What we're seeing in the core below Gaspar is very, very encouraging for volumes and the amount of copper. What we're going to see at Camillo might change things again. So with exploration and the exploration process, people need to be very aware that things will change, and generally when they do, it's positive. And we're seeing change, and we're seeing change because of positive, positive results that we're seeing from the drilling that's ongoing. Now, I like these sort of questions, and obviously it's a hypothetical one because the study work hasn't been done, but how do you manage the risk of start starting mining at the wrong time, either too early or too late? Well, I mean, right now um, I'm focusing on exploration. <laughs> that's what we do. I'm I've, I've done some mining in my career, but my, I mean, I'm, I'm an exploration geologist and, and what we need to do is with the Antilles team, and they've got a fantastic uh, development and production team, is they will look at the uh, economics of El Pilar oxide 
and they can move on that. I mean, when you look at the size of a porphyry system, potentially it's large. So if you've got small oxide pits above it, it it's not going to change the overall mining plan for a large sulphide deposit below it. Um, and given we're looking in an area two by two kilometres, there's a lot of room in there. So um, if oxide can potentially be a very low capex start to mining and can give us cash flow early, I, I'd, I'd certainly go for that. And I think it's very, very positive. Um, but I don't think it's going to affect what's going to happen underneath with the sulphide because it's such a, a much larger target. But the key with us, we're exploration guys. We've got to find it first, and that, that's what we're doing. And, and that sort of flows on. There is a question here. Could free cash flow from smaller mines at current metal prices potentially fund a maiden resource drill out at the porphyry targets? 100%. I mean, we're looking at really – we're looking at a – a very low capex and very, very clean concentrate uh, oxide system. I mean, there's zero arsenic in this. It's it's basically oxide gold and secondary chalcocyte. So we've got, I mean, it's a, it's a top tier for metallurgy system. There's no complex, complexities here. The team have been working hard on looking at the, the processing circuit for it. The concentrate looks like it's going to be highly sought after because it's very clean. We've got a hopefully a plus two gram per ton oxide gold system, which is money for jam. And then we've got the copper underneath it. I mean, we've been talking about this as being an oxide gold, but the copper potential in the oxide is where the real cash, I think, will come from. And because the copper's leached down and moves around, I think we're going to find more as well. So this is really a, a copper-focused project, but we have a gold cap on it then the copper oxide, then the copper sulphide potential with some gold credits below that. Now, a question here. What was the total resource and grade of El Cobre? Okay, well, El Cobre is is a little bit strange because it's been mined for so long. I mean, the, the records weren't kept, but if you look at these series of pits and you can see these things on Google Earth, they're massive. They probably run for three kilometres. So it looks like to me if you do a back of the envelope and you just look at roughly what the ore body would be it, it's probably plus 300 million ton ore body so it is very large it, it's it's a tier one ore body it's not a pull free system it's been described as a vms but it to me it's more like a peruvian kind of manto system it's hosted in volcano sediments um and it's fluids that are coming off a of porphyry so if you see that kind of system size coming off a of porphyry there's a lot of fluids involved, so it, it, it's it's big. And there, there's obviously a lot more there. I mean, this thing, it, they're still mining the oxide in parts of it. So I don't think they fully know the scale of it, but I'd say it's at least 350 million tonnes in size. Won't hold you to it, um, given the uh, the data hasn't been put out, but a good guesstimate. Um, last couple of questions through. Um, question here, to move the drilling strategy to Gaspar means you think there is greater potential there. Is that correct? Can you hint your thoughts at the better, uh, your thoughts of the better systems between the two? Okay, so we're seeing porphyry style mineralization of both. Okay, so that's very positive. After the first hole in Gaspar and, and the guys at site and what we're seeing visually, um, it looks, it's, it's certain, we're seeing higher temperature alteration there. So the key with porphyry systems is, most of the copper gold is going to come out in, in high temperature early part of the porphyry intrusive phase. And then you're going to get later events like the breaches overprinting it and different lower temperature alteration. We're seeing higher temperature alteration at gas bar. So to me, that's that's a positive. We're also seeing a lot of copper sulfide there. We're seeing, again, breaches. We're seeing um, different styles of breaches. We're seeing the classic porphyry veining through there as well. So we're, we're very excited. I mean, to get that on the first deep hole when we weren't expecting it, is very, very positive. Again, we're dealing with an area, as I said, you saw the photo, it's very flat. There's hardly any outcrop here. So you can make visual estimates at surface, but until you drill them, you won't know. So um, we've got a good success rate at El Pilar. We're at Gaspar now. It's looking really exciting. Um, who knows what's going to happen at Camillo, but we, I would suggest we need to get some holes in there pretty quick as well. But we're certainly going to have to put some more holes in Gaspar and, and, and have a... Uh, I, I, another good look at this before we make any kind of decisions. Now, this is a very hypothetical question, but you've been around a long time. You understand the game. When do, when do majors start looking at what you're doing, given the size of the prize? And like you say, you're in clear elephant country. The results are uh, certainly yielding positive results or the drilling's yielding positive results. When do majors start going, hang on, I'm going to start looking at these guys? 
Okay, so we've been lucky to have sold two projects to majors. One of them we we basically sold after it had been developed and the other one before it was developed. So um, if you're looking at the gold business and the copper business, they're a bit different. The copper business, I think, now is that the majors will become a little bit more, um, they'll certainly go out the, a lot more out of their way. So um, we have good relationships with a lot of the majors because they're obviously we've shopped around a lot of projects to them and I've been surprised at the amount of attention that they give to Cuba. Everybody knows the Sarah Maestri belt is extremely prospective. It's underexplored and it's an elf country. And there's very few of these ESC and porphyry systems left in the world. So if you see one, you've got to get onto it. So we've already had a lot of attention from people asking questions, but I think what the majors really want to see is uh, good drill hits into it and a rough size, Not nothing drilled out. I think they want to see drill hits over significant volumes they don't have to be deep, but they have to be consistent over a fairly large footprint, and then they'll get them excited. Um, certainly, that was the story with um, um, uh, El Alacran in, in, in Colombia. Um, basically, earlier on with drilling in there, we had a lot of majors jump all over that, and that's now in pre-development. So um, I think something like uh, the Sierra Maestri, we'll see a lot of majors become very, very interested in it, whereas the El Pilar, they want to, they'll probably want to see a little bit more drilling. Um, and just last question in terms of drilling, what depth are you looking to drill to at Gaspar? Is it the same as El Pilar? Um, okay, so the hole we're drilling now is not that deep. I mean, we're only 200 metres down. So, I mean, we would hope to be able to drill somewhere between 300 and 400 metres as the second hole to follow up at Gaspar. Um, that would certainly be the plan. Um, we'll be drilling it from a different orientation. Um, it's certainly open vertically and also to the east from what we've seen so far. Um, but who knows? I mean, it, I mean, one hole into a system is is nothing. So um, we will probably drill a two to three hundred meter hole into Gaspar as soon as we can. I think. Well, that does bring an end. We we're out of questions. We had a stack of questions. Um, so thank you everyone for submitting those. And Christian, thanks for batting through them all as uh, adeptly as you did. Um, like I said, that does bring an end to today's webinar. I would like to thank Christian for the in-depth presentation, but also taking the time to go through uh, the, the, the many questions that came through and really expand on the, the information that's in the, the deck that uh, that is before us. Um, so Christian, thank you firstly to you for uh, your presentation and going through the questions. I'd also like to thank the uh, audience members for participating and, and asking as many questions as they did and getting really involved. Um, the company is available to answer any further questions if people want to contact the company direct. Um, and a copy of this presentation will be uh, going uh, live via the company website uh, in the next 24 hours. So, Christian, thank you very much. Uh, really appreciated it. Uh, we love an exploration and a head of exploration with a big smile on his face and an excitable uh, demeanour. So uh, if that's a hint of anything to come, we really look forward to following Antilles uh, and your progress. Thanks, David. That was excellent. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.